Okay, back here at the uh, shop made braised corbard boring bars. Here's a tiny threading tool here, of course that's for the web. And uh, they don't work really good or as good unless you can get them centered in the machine. So let's go over to uh, the more jig board here. And I got a, a piece of aluminum scrap in here. Let's say this is a real expensive flange and uh, we need to bore it out and sleeve it for a new bearing. So we got the thing centered and uh, now we need to get uh, the boring head in there and uh, get the tool centered. This is a nice, fresh, super sharp, uh, short tool. It's nice to uh, have them as short as possible. Okay, I'll get the camera on a tripod and be right back. Okay, I've got a small combo center drill going in the truck there and I'm making a little ink spot there nice and dark with a magnum sharpie you have to have a permit for this in the state of Washington okay so I'm going to feed this loosen the table lock and I'm going to feed it So, I'm going to bring down that drill, looks like I've got a lock here to unlock, there we go, bring it over a little more, right about there should be good, I'll back it up a little bit. Okay, now I got a little dot there from the tip of that drill, and uh, I'll get the boring head in the spindle and show you some tricks here. Be right back. All right, now the uh, Criterion 202 boring head is installed. And I have it raised up a bit, and we take a square. Now, the square heads that I've shown, I, I, I actually really prefer those uh, because they're really uh, sturdy. So, you bring a square up to it from the column here, or uh, same with your uh, Bridgeport milling machine, and you square that surface there. We have the dial facing the back of the machine, okay? So when you normally uh, adjust this, you'd be feeding it this direction and thus the edge of the cutter. So that dot I created there will bring the cutter on down to that dot. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to attempt <laughs> that screwdriver fell. Let's see if we can do this. You can see that cutter. Oh, I hope so. Right on that uh, dot. And with magnification, set that down, you can see it better. And I use, uh, I, they call them dental loops, 2.5 uh, magnification that have about an 18 inch, uh, they're glasses, and have about an 18 inch uh, distance. Uh, it works real good for this, but uh, magnification helps. So I got the small dot, 
and uh, it's on the y-axis. Now you could do the same thing if the hole was located with scribe marks. You could bring it to a scribe mark. Now the um, we're using the y-axis um, here because um, you could do it on the other axis okay too, but it's just more convenient um, using the y the y axis. Now we're going to get a little bit deep here. Now longer bars, uh, that's why I like the short ones, will suffer a little bit of torsion from not a whole lot of uh, cutting pressure. And it's sort of like the whole mechanism, uh, because there's these pieces here, can suffer some torsion. So I tend to uh, make a small dot, then put, put the edge, the tip, on the far side of the dot to compensate it like that. Now, <laughs> you might... The, the one thing that's more important than is supreme accuracy in this alignment I'm showing you is consistency. This helps you be consistent. So when you make the final two or three cuts, and I can explain that a little bit more, and that's what these bars are for for finishing, that you'll hit your target diameter. And why would you go to this effort? And the reason I do is fitting bearings. And it's a bad idea to go, well, I'll give that bearing a thousand, so I'll give this bearing a couple thousand, or something like that. Well, you really need to look at what the manufacturer says uh, the press fit should be. And you might find it's considerably less, and so you don't want to, you don't want to overdo stuff because you're going to shorten the life of a bearing by pushing it in a too small of a hole. So, with this machine and doing this and using these sharp cutters for finishing uh, two to three steps, uh, actual final target sizes with the last two cuts. But I, I guess I'll have to show that some more. Uh, and, and it's the same on the lathe, and it's uh, been done for forever, forever. But anyway, that's how you can be sure to um, have the tool aligned. And then with it like that, you can observe it. And it, it might be hard to observe, but you can see that this has uh, top rakes back and, and uh, towards the shank. And it makes it really free cutting. And the cuts, the finishing cuts I would take with this would not exceed five thousandths depth at the very most, and often considerably less, like, oh, you know, uh, uh, a thousandths and a half depth. So you'd have to leave like nine, or about ten thousandths for three cuts. And I'll kind of get into that, what that, uh, um, exactly how those steps work. But this is how you can do it. You can check the bars you have and see <laughs> if the carbide's too tall, uh, you're going to end up with negative rake and, and, and maybe not a very nice uh, hole. But a lot of times, see, that's compensated because you can bring it, bring it back. And a lot of people will eyeball the hole and then rotate the tool until it has enough uh, clearances to cut, like with cheap boring bars. And it, uh, it'll work, you know. You, you do it, you make it work, and it works for the most part. But it's not good enough for bearing work where you're uh, really attempting to, to work in the tenth 
of, of thousands. And of course, the, the more jig bore is a machine that works in the tens of thousands. But it, if you uh, apply this to a, a, a good uh, vertical mill in, in good shape, you can easily consistently get two tenths of a thousands. And that, you know, is, is uh, the a nice part of uh, doing this work is if you can be consistent and have confidence <laughs> that you're going to be able uh, to uh, fit a precision bearing into a hole that you created. Okay, I hope that made a little bit of sense, but I'll uh, show more of it putting it in practice as I'm uh, testing out these tools. <laughs> I've got uh, quite a bit of testing uh, and more of a learning curve on that uh, Wallhopter UK4. That's, that's quite a puzzle, but it can do some amazing results. Okay, I will be back with more tool creativity soon. Yeah, that's a nice looking hole. All right. Thanks for tuning in.